today we are going to talk about audio editing till now we have covered pretty much almost half of the workflow uh, of post production uh, we might say but uh, there are certain things that a professional editor a feature film editor might not have to do but a professional editor in the market for example uh, if you are doing if you are making corporate films if you are into short film making if you are into youtube videos so you are responsible for the editing of sound you are as responsible for color correction and you are responsible for the vfx and other everything and even in feature films you are responsible uh, responsible for the export of the and delivery of the file also so uh, today we are going to explore about audio how what is audio what is sound how it is edited and uh, what are the principles which are governing the aesthetics and technicals of sound so in in the editing software when we go and when we check about sound editing so in the editing software we can see there are many filters and there are many uh, plugins those are kept which we think which we uh, uh, do not know how how to use what to use today we will we are going to understand from the very basic what these filters are and uh, how and what they are um, used for before that before starting with audio editing uh, i'll just um, give a brief idea about what we are going to do today first of all we are going to understand what is sound what is the what, what is basically physical property that is called sound we will be exploring aesthetics of sound in film that is not exactly aesthetic is not exactly the art of film making but there are certain types of names given to certain sounds for example diegetic sound non diegetic sound parallel sound contrapuntal sound fidelity high fidelity low fidelity all these terminologies we will understand which is pertaining to the aesthetic of the editing and then we will come to the technical part we will understand filters and equalizers and other things so uh, let us start with audio editing audio sound what does it mean what is sound and what is audio you are able to listen to me right now so what is happening so first thing that we need to understand that sound is a wave wave we have already seen a diagram of a wave it goes like this you can draw like this a sinusoidal wave sine wave it goes like this suppose that wave is like you are, you have seen it on a screen it goes like this suppose it is, it is coming like this to you so this is a graph that we make on 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 the table that that sinusoidal graph we make on the paper or on our computer screen or on our whiteboard but actually what is happening here is that there are air particles which are vibrating so when i speak something so i disturb the air particles the air the medium through which the sound is traveling and it starts vibrating so this vibration is the amplitude amplitude if you remember the height of the wave if the wave is going like this how much height the crest and the trough of the wave is that is the amplitude so the amplitude is basically the vibration it is vibrating like this when it is reaching to you it is vibrating wherever it is going it is vibrating and when that when we plot that vibration when we draw a graph on that vibration we get a sinusoidal we get a sine wave okay so sound is a wave and pitch is the sensation of the sound sensation of the frequency of the wave so wave will have amplitude a wave will have wavelength and wave will have a frequency all these things in the video format class we have done you go back to the video format class class number 3 you will understand about the nature of the wave a wave will have amplitude the height of the wave wavelength the length of the wave and the frequency how many times in a second the cycle will repeat that is the frequency so all the sounds that we are hearing so right now while while i am speaking there are low frequencies there are high frequencies there are mid range frequencies so combinations of these frequencies of the wave becomes the sound and pitch is the sensation of the frequencies that we are hearing if you are hearing high frequency sounds we call it high pitch if you hearing low frequency sounds heavy voice 
we call it low pitch okay so this is basically what sound is now before getting into the technical aspects of sound how a filmmaker uses how a film editor uses sound that we need to understand that we need to cover first for that we need to understand human perception of sound how do humans hear what is the sensation of sound for humans when a baby is conceived inside the womb of a mother sound after four and a half months if the baby can listen to the sound so sound becomes the dominant sensation at that time there is touch and smell also but it is very faint it is very little and it is uh, what is uh, as compared to what is about to come it is very little the, the taste and the smell the sensation of taste and the smell the sound becomes the queen of the senses inside the mother's womb so that is the first sensation that we experience we listen to the chords we listen to the food being eaten we listen to the singing of the mother if the door is closed very uh, tightly we can listen that so sound becomes sound is the sensation sound is the primary uh, sound becomes the queen of the senses and now when a baby is born the visual the sight overpowers the sound also and sight now becomes the king of the senses sight becomes the dominant uh, sensation and now everything else whatever we here we imagine some kind of image and all the sound becomes now complementary to the image what do i mean by that that sound become sound has become complementary to the image or sound becomes complementary to the image that means you cannot imagine any sound without an image whatever sound you imagine there is an image attached to it you are listening to a car driven you will imagine a car you are listening to a door being shut you will imagine a door so all the sounds are attached with the visual the visual sound is complementary to the sound becomes complementary to the visual now this skill of humans i have been calling it a skill or you can call it a trait this trait of humans of reassociating sound and image i'll give an example of reassociation of sound and image so this trait of humans of reassociation of sound and image is where the creative use of sound in cinema rests the filmmaker the film editor does creative things with sound because uh, taking in account this trait of humans that we reassociate image and sound for example let us take an example for example there is a close shot of a man whose face is emotionless we cannot identify he is angry or sad or happy he is a very neutral flat face he has a very neutral flat face and he is closing a door we cannot see the door we cannot see the action of the door how he is closing it we just see a close up of his face and he is closing a door now the editor will put the sound of the door while he is editing he or she is editing and uh, before the final uh, mixing it might be a folly so what kind of the kind of sound the editor puts will tell us about two things first thing about the material of the door the first information that we'll get from the sound that any sound that the editor will put we will understand two things from it because of our ability our trait of reassociation of image and sound so you put a sound we will know two things number one the material of the door whether it is a plastic door wooden door uh, iron door what kind of door it is the material of the door and the second information that will be get is the emotional state of the person who is shutting the door if he shuts it quietly we understand how he is thinking what he is feeling if he shuts it very violently we understand how he is feeling if he shuts it normally we understand how he is feeling so this is what is called reassociation of sound and image where any sound can be visualized by humans and there is this is how the creative use of sound in cinema is done we also call it human perception of sound coming to more uh, technical usages of sound there are it is not exactly technical but there are also aesthetic usages of sound there are whenever we go ahead with uh, sound editing there are various types of sounds 
which we have to use and we have named them differently in different use. So I'm going to talk about some seven, eight different types of songs in the PDF file. Also, you will get to see all this um, information in the PDF file, but I'm going to explain here what they mean so that the concept inside your head is clear about the nature of this aesthetic sounds. So types of aesthetics of sound, number one will be fidelity. Fidelity means faithfulness. So there are two types of sounds related to fidelity, high fidelity or low fidelity. High fidelity means when the sound is faithful to the visual. A low fidelity means when the sound is not faithful to the visual. What is the meaning of faithful? Suppose we are showing dog barking. A dog is barking. But if you put the sound of a lion when a dog is barking, that means that is a low fidelity sound. It might be for your artistic purpose. You might be trying to show something. You, you might be trying to put a message by putting the sound of a lion on a dog. But this is an example of a low fidelity sound. High fidelity sound. This is a table and I knock this table. So when I knock this table, the sound of the table comes, comes up. This is a high fidelity sound. So one, one uh, very uh, classical example of low fidelity is uh, there's a film called Murder on the Orient Express by Alfred Hitchcock. I, I, I think 19, late 1950s. Uh, I'm not very sure about the date. But in that, in that film, a train is going on and a warden of the train, it is an old uh, style made train. The warden of the train, she enters a compartment she draws the curtains and she sees a young lady is being killed and she is lying on the floor. So the camera is behind and this patron or matron, she turns back. Her mouth wide open and she is shouting. And we, cannot, we do not hear the sound of her shouting. We hear the sound of the whistle of the train and the train comes out of the tunnel. If it was high fidelity in normal sense, we should have kept the sound of the scream of the woman. But we have not kept the sound of the scream. We have kept here, Alfred Hitchcock has kept the sound of the train whistling out of the tongue. An example of high form of art, but low fidelity. So high fidelity is when, when whatever you are watching on the screen, the same sound is coming, that is the high fidelity. And low fidelity when some other sound is coming, whatever you are watching on the film, there are many times it comes, low fidelity doesn't make it wrong. Low fidelity is another form of, it, it can be expressed in art, it can be expressed in uh, message. The reassociation of sound and image can be done in the low fidelity also. Okay. So first factor in the aesthetic of sound is fidelity. There are two types, high fidelity and low fidelity. How much the sound is faithful? If the sound is faithful to the visual, it is high fidelity. If the sound is not faithful to the visual, it is low fidelity. The second type of sound is contrapuntal sound. I will come back to fidelity again. I will compare it with other sounds also, other types of sound that I'm explaining. The other types of sounds are next fidelity, high fidelity, low fidelity. The next will be parallel sound and contrapuntal sound. Parallel sound is when the audio is following the visual. Now mind you, in fidelity, we use the word faithful. Here we, we are using the word following. There is a bit difference in it. I will explain it technically also. So parallel sound is when the audio is following the visual. When the sound is following the visual, that is a parallel sound. Suppose there is a sad scene and you have a sad music. It is a parallel sound. When the sound is not following the visual, you have a sad scene and but the music is very energetic or people are energetic in the scene, but the music is very sad, contrapuntal. One good example, um, there is a Hindi film called Deir Ishkia. I think 2014-15, um, the year of release was. Those who haven't seen, or those who have seen, the last scene of the film is a shootout scene. Police and various gangs come to a abandoned railway station and they start firing each other. So whenever there is this kind of a scene, there's an action climax 
there's an action scene at the climax. Uh, generally, we put high pitch music and it, it, it will be rock music or drums being beaten, elect, kind of electronic music, pumped up music. But here, the makers of the film, the director, the editor of the film has put Ghazal in the last shootout. Ghazal is love song. It is either you are describing the beauty of the beloved or you are describing the pain of separation from the beloved. A love song put, ghazal, any kind of ghazal is a, a, a love song. A love song put in an action scene. An example of contrapuntal song. Why they have done that? Because this action, this fight is happening because of separation of the beloved. Different people are coming to get the love and the hand of Madhuri Dikshit in that film and no one is getting it and they are fighting. So everyone is at pain and they are fighting that. So that kind of treatment they have given in the film, an example of contrapuntal song. One more example I will give and I will co collaborate all the types like fidelity and contrapuntal and uh, co parallel also into it. Suppose a woman is going uh, in the kitchen, in her kitchen and she is very angry. And she starts the cooker, she is doing something else and the whistle from the cooker is very aggressive. We can see heavy steam coming out and we can see the sound also, very aggressive sound also. So since the steam is also coming out violently and the sound is also coming out violently, it is a high fidelity sound. And she is angry and the steam is also representing her, her anger. The sound of the steam is also representing her anger that, that it, it becomes a parallel sound. So it is high fidelity and parallel, both. But if the sound would have been a rhythmic sound, then it might have been high fidelity, but it was contrapuntal. Because right now, she is not in the mood of a music or rhythm, she is angry, but the audience, the filmmaker have cut off the audience from the scene and they are making us watch her on a third person. They do not want us to feel for her. They want us to watch from the third person. So they have put a different kind of contrapuntal song. One more example I will give. A father whose son has died by drowning in the sea, by drowning in the water. So our scene is a father is sitting in a room and he is thinking about his son who has been, who is dr drowned in the water and is dead. And in that preoccupation, his mobile phone falls on the ground. And when it falls on the ground, the mobile phone, when it strikes the ground, we hear a sound of splash of water. Now, what is it? It is a low fidelity sound. If the mobile phone hits the ground, th there will be a different kind of sound, not the splash of water. But we know why the splash of water is coming because the mind of the father is in the water because his son is drowned in the water. So that is why it is a parallel sound. Low fidelity but parallel. So a high fidelity can be a parallel or contrapuntal. A low fidelity can also be parallel or contrapuntal. A parallel sound can be a high fidelity or low fidelity. Even a contrapuntal sound can be high fidelity or low fidelity. Three examples I have given and you will understand about this. Fidelity and contrapuntal and parallel. The next type, I am not putting you numbers. The numbers you can see uh, in the in, in the PDF that we have given, the numbers are there. Okay. Uh, so the next next point will be synchronous, syncing. A synchronous sound, synchronous sound. Synchronous sound or sync sound is when the sound is in sync with the visual. I am speaking my lips are in sync with the words that I am talking. So this is a synchronous sound. A synchronous sound when any sound is lagging behind or coming before the action, that is a synchronous sound. That is also, that is a synchronous sound is not always a mistake. That is also used creatively. Sometimes in music videos, for example, Pahela Nasha and there are many other music videos where people slow down the video, the song is going in a normal pace and lip sync is out and that looks romantic, that looks um, uh, with a different kind of emotion. Also, if the person is very troubled in the mind, 
he is listening he or she is listening to the sound before or after that trick is also used uh, asynchronous sound trick is also used in order to um, establish the status of the mind so i am not telling you about the regular uh, quotes like sound is the 50% of the film and all those things i do not consider it as a 50% of the film sound is the integral part of the film i am just not i am not going to make it just a 50% of the film without sound i cannot make for example i gave you the examples of door that door even a single door shot is telling me so many things whatever sound i am putting in my film is telling the viewer so many things viewers is reassociating the image with the sound and without even showing the sound they are understanding many things sound is also used in 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 creative uses of sound are done in uh, restricting the budget also i have to blow up a bridge i don't have the budget to blow up the bridge i will show a reaction of a person who is watching the bridge being blown up and i will put the sound which will make the audience feel that yes the bridge has been blown so um, and all this aesthetic pointers that i am talking about are used in order to create the reassociation of sound and image in our heads fidelity fidelity has two parts high fidelity low fidelity parallel sound contrapuntal sound then comes asynchronous and synchronous sound synchronous sound is where the visual uh, the audio is synced with the visual and asynchronous is where the audio is not synced with the visual next is diegetic d i e g e t i c diegetic diegetic sound and another is non diegetic sound suppose you are watching sequence where a person is walking you can see only the mid shot of the person this much and he is walking you can hear the sound of the footsteps and you can hear the music also he is walking up stairs on the stairs so the sound of the footstep is diegetic sound and the sound of the music is non diegetic diegetic sound means when we know the source of the sound on screen even if we don't know we don't see suppose you you show you put sound of the air sound of the wind we do not see the wind but we know the wind is being there because the clothes are blowing up the hairs are blowing up leaves are blowing up so there must be wind and we are hearing the sound of the wind similarly i cannot see the shoe but if the person's upper half is there the shoe must be there itself and we are hearing the sound of the shoe but where is the music coming from the music there is no direct source of the music on the screen suppose someone is talking a monologue someone is saying a monologue delivering a monologue where we do not see him speaking and he is speaking his mind the mind does not speak so the music the monologue these are the examples of non diegetic sound diegetic sound is when we have a fixed source of the sound on screen that is only diegetic when we don't have the source of the sound that we are hearing that is non diegetic one last example i will give you will understand diegetic non diegetic in mythological stories in hindu mythological stories there is one phenomena that happens regularly in between that people are going there and akashwani happens voice from the sky akashwani so what is it akashwani is diegetic sound or non diegetic sound akashwani is a diegetic sound because we know the source of the sound in that world akash delivers vani the sky delivers voice in in that world so akashwani is diegetic sound coming from a particular source in lion king the lion speaks in english or hindi that doesn't mean that it is a non diegetic sound in that world the lion speaks in human language so it becomes a diegetic sound whenever we know the source of the sound on screen it becomes it is diegetic whenever whenever we don't know the source of the sound on screen it is non diegetic sound okay the last part the last aesthetic of uh, audio in in film is volume volume is also used as an aesthetic how there are multiple suppose there are multiple characters in a scene someone's volume you have kept down someone's volume you have kept up that also depends suppose there is a spy and he is spying on two people who are sitting in a park 
every other sound is blocked out and the spy and the audience can hear only those two people talking so here the volume is also used as the aesthetic of the sound so these seven eight points are the aesthetics of sound we have spoken about what is sound sound is a wave we have spoken about human perception of sound and then we have elaborated the human perception of sound in filmmaking how filmmakers use this human perception of sound and these are the seven eight types of aesthetics of sound high fidelity low fidelity parallel sound contrapuntal sound asynchronous synchronous diegetic sound non diegetic sound and finally the volume now we will move to the second section of our lecture which is the technicalities of sound when you are actually editing in a non linear editing system so first of all we need to understand that for editing specifically for editing sounds there are separate softwares called daws d a w digital audio workstations now nles non linear editing systems that we are talking about in this course adobe premiere black magic final cut pro they also have a very elaborated sound editing systems now in their software so a professional editor if you are making a corporate film if you are making a short film or you are making a youtube video you need not go to any daw i will name some of the daws adobe auditions pro tools uh, like fcp pro tools works only on mac adobe audition is an adobe product adobe product so uh, if you are making a no, uh, youtube video i'll reiterate if, uh, if you are making youtube uh, videos if you are making short films if you are making corporate videos non linear editing systems provide enough tools enough editing facilities that you can complete the project in one software itself and give a final output what you need to know about um, uh, to to start editing audio i will come to the workflow in the last part first i will cover some of the technical things so that you get an idea of um, what sound is and then we will go to the workflow part sounds we are in the pdf file you will see we have given some of the technical terms what is bass what is treble what is harmonic content what are uh, what is pitch wet sound dry sound so all those definitions you can see but those are much more for uh, much more usable to talk to another sound editors and to understand what we have but what we are going to do in the software there the wet sound and dry sound and all those thing doesn't matter there the sound is sound where we have a wave form we can watch and we have to edit that sound the first thing that you know to know when you are editing when you are using sound and you are editing sound apart from cutting the clips when we, whenever we are processing sound we are removing noise or we are removing distortion or we are mixing sound we are playing with the frequencies so sound editing is the game of frequencies frequencies we know the repetitions of wavelengths now a sound like right now i am speaking it is a bundle of frequencies different waves are there and there are so many 48000 96000 frequencies together in a, on a different planes so adding or removing the frequencies is what this filters do so filters filter what the filters filter out frequencies they allow sometimes they allow high frequencies sometimes they allow low frequencies sometimes they cut high frequencies sometimes they cut low frequencies sometimes they cut frequencies in between sometimes they cut frequencies in notches sometimes they cut frequency in coms so all these filters becomes different comes with different names right so first thing that we need to understand is that filters are adding or removing frequencies audio filters add or remove frequencies now i'll list out some names of the filters and you will understand the nature of the filters high cut filter high cut filter means high frequency cut so if my voice generally a male human voice i am speaking from 250 to 2500 hertz i have little bit of more some 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 frequencies are going 6000 7000 also but very less my voice is i am a grown up adult male so i have 280 to 2800 3000 uh, max generally 2500 to 3000 till that range i have this frequency a female a grown up female will have 300 to 3000 3500 till that range a little bit higher than the human male not very high little bit higher than the human male but that little bit higher we can perceive with as a 
shrill voice or high pitch voice more so uh, imagine if we go beyond 10000 or 15000 our eyes cannot tolerate that that is why uh, sorry our ears cannot tell it all right that so frequencies high frequency cut if i put high frequency cut so it will cut out all the high frequencies whatever settings i have done okay i say i'll tell that cut out all the frequencies beyond 3500 so if some construction is happening and people are using the ax or whatever those all those sounds will be cut and only my voice will remain that is how sound editors edit sound they add or remove frequencies so high cut filter that means high frequency cut that is also called as low pass filter whenever you are cutting the high frequency you are allowing the low filter to pass the low frequencies to pass through the filter so high cut filter and low pass filter are the same thing similarly low cut filter and high pass filters are the same thing whenever you are cut the low frequencies you are allowing the high frequencies to pass so high cut low pass same thing low cut and high pass same thing then there are different kinds of filter band filter notch filter notch filter is notching up taking a small notch from the whole frequency range that is called notch filter there are various types of filters we have given in the pdf now these filters are if we have any distortion in the sound we can see the waveform and we know that okay this sound is going above the clip this sound is going below the clip and we put a filter which will cut the high or which will cut the low more experienced editor do not use filters also they just use one equalizer and they adjust all the frequencies in that equalizer now we are coming to the equalizer part of the second part second part of the second part of the lecture equalizers are nothing but the console that you see the musicians have this console right all these big studios have this console someone is singing inside the studio and these people are making some buttons go up some buttons go down dj's are playing music and they put the levers up and down that is a physical form of equalizer the same equalizer is in the software also and there are different types of equalizers fixed frequency equalizers where the frequencies are fixed you cannot change the frequency you can change only volume then there is variable frequency uh, equalizer where you can change the frequency and change the volume also then there is parametric equalizer where you can change the frequency you can change the volume also you can have a q factor q factor means you can select how much of the frequency some somewhere you can select five ranges of frequency somewhere you somewhere you can select one range of frequency in the variable uh, frequency equalizer the choice was same you cannot change the amount of frequency in parametric eq that is the most used eq equalizer here you have the option of q which is the q factor which is the quality like how much frequency so i just want this particular noise to removed so parametric eq give me space to just remove that particular noise not not i i will not hamper the other sound or the other music so equalizer is same is like the console so what is in that console if you imagine the console you will understand the whole equalizer also so just imagine the console so i am sitting with the console here okay so there are buttons so these buttons on my left side are low frequency and these on my right side are high frequency so if i put here put down the low and high i have eliminated unwanted noise and then i come to 280 remember i have said that human voice it starts from 280 to 2800 i come to 280 and i increase a little bit so if i am increasing that means i am increasing the gain the audio of it if i am decreasing like like this if i did i am decreasing the audio gain of it so i am increasing 2 3 dbs of 280 frequency at 280 hertz and i am increasing 3 4 dbs at 2800 hertz so my voice now gets a warmth and clarity and all the noise of of other room noise or other outside noise cuts down because of this i i have re reduced high and the low frequencies so the equalizer is where all the sets of frequencies are there where we can change the frequencies we can change the audio and we can change the q factor also right and this is called parametric eq i'll just 
conclude the technicalities of sound, what we you need to understand in order to start editing audio. I'll come to the workflow in the last part. In order in audio, you need to understand two things. The plugins that are there in the software are either filters or equalizers. Filters add or remove frequencies. Equalizers can arrange, it can add or remove frequencies in one plugin. It equalizes the sound. The same equalizer is used for mixing and mastering also. So let me theoretically tell you about mixing. I will uh, later on during the last week when we do documentary or uh, music video or something, I will show you a basic mixing also. How do we mix audio also? Mixing is done. Suppose uh, I'll tell you why mixing is needed. What is mixing? First of all, you need to understand. So there are various sounds, soundtracks when we give an output to a film. So there is the dialogue, the human voice. Then there are the follies, the sound like yesterday we were watching, uh, the bike sound, people sound, the other sounds are there. And then there's the music. So minimum three tracks in any film you need. Then there are many other tracks uh, in, in the advanced edit if you go. Now, all these three tracks, human voice have a certain range of frequency. The ambience noise or whatever the folly is there, that has its own frequencies and the music has its own frequency and they will collide with each other. Even if you drop the gain, drop the volume of the music, it will come over the voice if the frequency is matching. If there is a 1500, there's an instrument which is playing at 1500 hertz and my main voice is coming at 1500 hertz, whatever, however you reduce the volume of the music, the music will overpower my voice. It will come in the voice, you will neither be able to hear the music properly nor my voice. So here we need to mix the music. Sound editing and sound mixing are different things. This is a confusion. People think that sound mixing is just putting one track and then other track that is called mixing. No. Sound editing is cutting of the sound and sound mixing is this what I'm talking about, mixing the frequencies of sound. So now what we will do, we will increase the human voice from 280 dB, 280 Hertz to 2800 Hertz. We will increase the dBs, we will increase the volume of that range of frequency of the human voice and we will decrease that range 280 to 2800 of the music. Other musical parts will be of the same volume. So now the audio will be mixed. You increase a certain range of frequencies of the human voice and the same range of frequencies of the music you reduce. So other sounds, you will not lose all the sounds of the music. If you de decrease the volume, you will lose other sounds also. So music sound is what it should come. The human voice sound will be what it should come and it will be mixed together. And you will, you will hear a combination of the music and the sound and you can, both, you can clearly hear the, both the tracks. That is what sound mixing does. Okay, an equalizer is a tool that is used in the sound mixing. Equalizer equalizes, it increases, it, you can use, you, you can reduce the low frequency, high frequency, whatever you want, you can increase 280 to 2800 and you can decrease 280 to 2800 and both the tracks you have put the equalizer here and here both and it, it has mixed now, the sound is now mixed, this is how equalizer works so technicalities of editing i was talking about the main thing is the filter filter adds or remove frequencies here the equalizers also do the same thing either they add or remove frequencies now in a much more complicated manner they do it equalizers than the filters okay and finally the sound is mixed with the equalizer only so this was the understanding of the technicalities of uh, of sound there are certain term terminologies and terms that we are we are giving in the pdf you go through those to basic understanding after this lecture and that pdf you will understand all about sound what is needed for the sound editing in the whole video editing technical workflow now i'll come to the last part of this lecture which is the sound editing workflow how do we edit sound how do we go about it now we understand what we what is needed we understand the aesthetics of sound. We know there are different types of sound, diegetic sound, non-diegetic sound. All these things are done while sound editing. 
that is the first stage while editing the sound we are thinking about how we are using the diegetic sound how we are using, are we doing low fidelity or we doing high fidelity all these decisions we take during the sound edit we are cutting out we are putting some sound somewhere that is called the sound edit also called as sound designing okay the second stage is adr additional dialogue recording also known as dubbing suppose you need a voice over that is not dubbing then it is called adr dubbing is part of an adr narration is also part of adr adr is the second stage additional dialogue record the third stage is adding effects and folly so folly walking footsteps whatever you have shot it doesn't come properly you have seen the raw footage yesterday we have to put folly again during the edit so all the folly and there are folly studios if you can search online there will be there are many folly studios there are many videos also how they make folly so if you put sand on 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 the glass it will sound like rain so there are many techniques like that that folly artists use and generally for youtube videos corporate videos uh, you will get online also many types of sounds online fcp even has its own library but those library is not very good youtube also has a free library in the last week i will show you many two tricks and tools that youtube has online you can gather and that will support your uh, video editing how do you gather uh, uh, copyright free stock footage i will tell you how do you gather copyright free stock music and uh, uh, copyright free sound effects also all these things in the last week we will cover all those things you do sound um, uh, sound editing then additional dialogue recording and then um, addition of folly or sound effects sound effects are called sfx like visual effects are called vfx it is called sfx so wherever you see sound effects sfx it is sound effects so sound effects are something folly is the are the sounds which exist in the nature footsteps bike going on wind blowing all the sounds exist in nature sound effects they do not exist in nature for example in a comedy film we put a sound like toying that is this toying sound doesn't exist in nature right it is a sound effect whoosh whash something like that a uh, uh, hitting sound all these are sound effects they do not exist in nature so unoriginal sound artificial sounds are called sound effects the next part is music sound designing or sound editing additional dialogue recording second stage third stage is folly or sound effects folly and fsx sfx and fourth is music editing now you you have done folly you have dialogue now you put music and now you have various tracks the fifth stage is sound mixing and mastering like you use equalizers and you put change frequencies you add you remove frequency and you mix the sound and it so, so it sounds like a whole a, a complete a single sound and then the final part is you export it uh, the exporting is also i will show you later in the export class uh, next week uh, last class will be exporting and file delivery i will show you how to deliver files of sound how to deliver visual video files all these things we will cover in the last part so this is the workflow of the sound sound editing or sound designing then additional dialogue replacement uh, uh, folly editing sfx next stage is music editing finally sound mixing and mastering and then finally export and output okay so this was all about sound all about audio i have covered three parts in this uh, class about aesthetics of sound that is the human perception of sound then i have covered the technical part of sound how filters and equalizers are used and in the third part i have demonstrated the workflow of audio editing whatever questions you have you can put on whatsapp youtube and google classroom thank you for attending